it's a wonderful story. Danforth, an Episcopal minister, a very wealthy heir to the Ralston Purina fortune, uh, an old-fashioned liberal Republican, a kind of salt and stall Republican, if you will, uh, as a brother, uh, William Danforth, a distinguished medical scientist, who is the president or chancellor of Washington University in St. Louis and a big deal in the uh, AAU, the Association of American Universities. The AAU is the 50 top universities in America, and it is it's offended. The research yes, it is offended by the earmarks as they burgeon and grow, yeah. because they believe in what they call peer review, that the government shouldn't give away money to Tufts University just because Tip O'Neill thinks it's a good idea. That if the government thinks that they should sponsor, for example, a nutrition research center, they should have a contest and let anybody who thought they had a good idea for how to do that submit a plan for a nutrition research center and then the peers, the academic experts chosen from the, the creme of the, the, creme of the uh, academic world would decide who deserved to get the money. Uh, this of course is self-serving in its own way because the senior research universities are likely often to have the most persuasive argument for their idea. They have the best people, they have the best facilities, that's why they're the best universities. Uh, but, but on the other hand, at least there's some fair-minded outside judgment about which program is most deserving. So, uh, Brother Danforth, Chancellor Danforth, persuades Senator Danforth that, that these earmarks are really getting out of hand and they ought to be stopped. John Danforth, the senator, gets up on the floor is in the 80s and says uh, and proposes on a defense appropriations bill to eliminate eight or nine, I've forgotten the number, of academic earmarks to universities that are in that bill. Uh, and says, you know, we, we're, this is out of hand now. We've got to stop this. We've got to keep focused on merit, on which are the most deserving and the, and the highest potential plans and not, and not give away research money because of somebody's political connections. Uh, and it passes. Uh, it passes pretty easily in the Senate. Uh, and this causes a red alert in the lobbying community, the earmark community, and among many members of the appropriations committees who have come to see earmarks as a way to feather their own political nests. Uh, Cassidy and his associates are in the vanguard of a hastily gathered war against the Danforth Amendment, as it's called. Uh, they prepare all kinds of research material. They show how uh, the peer review system that does exist for the NIH grants and other things for research favors the, the, the big guys, the, you know, the rich get richer kind of thing. Um, they cultivate all the, go to all members of the appropriations committee saying you don't really want this to happen because this will diminish your own personal clout and power. And three weeks later they get the thing back for a second vote and they reverse it. They get almost as big a margin against the Danforth Amendment the second time as they had the first time in favor of it. And that's really the last effort 20 plus years ago to, to stop this system, and it failed. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu. Thank you.